World Cup is Qatar. <laughs> Qatar is home to less than 3 million people, and it is the smallest country to ever host a World Cup. So the legacy of the tournament has to be managed carefully. If you add up the total costs, taking into account not only the cost of building new stadiums and renovating existing ones, but also all the money spent on infrastructure, this year's World Cup is by far the most expensive of all. Qatar is said to have incurred astronomical costs of around $220 billion. In comparison, the cost of the 2006 World Cup in Germany was only $4.3 billion. But it must be noted that the costs associated with the new stadiums in Qatar are only in the range of $7 to $10 billion. The majority of the spending is for infrastructure costs, which are part of the larger CAR 2030 plan. The stadiums are all within a 21-mile radius of central Doha and will be linked by a metro and tram system, allowing fans to watch multiple games on the same day, for any fan who wants to do. With high summer temperatures, each stadium is equipped with solar-powered cooling technology to keep the temperature at 27 degrees Celsius. All stadiums are eco-friendly, and their temperature will be controllable. The tournament organizers have pledged to build stadiums with modular elements, which will be reconfigured after the tournament to provide a lasting legacy for the World Cup far beyond Qatar's border. Only one stadium will be called home to a football team. Afterwards, one other stadium will be dismantled altogether, while six of the remaining venues will have half their seats taken up and sent to developing countries to help improve their sports infrastructure. With this step, as many as 22 new stadiums will be created in emerging economy. With that said, let's now examine the eight stadiums' distinctive designs in more detail. The Lucelle Stadium is first. Lucelle Stadium is the tournament's Schub Stadium, where the opening game, the championship game, and other important games will take place. This stadium, which has the biggest capacity of any stadium, was designed by Foster and Partners, and it can hold up to 80,000 spectators. The Fanner Lantern, which is distinguished by the play of light and shadow, serve as inspiration for its design. Loose form and facade reverberate. The complex patterns used to decorate bowls and other objects. Typical of the Arab and Islamic golden period of craftsmanship and art, the stadium, which is 10 kilometers from the heart of Doha, finally opened this year, much behind schedule. At the end of the tournament, most of the seats will be removed and donated to developing countries as the new city of Lul will not need its own football stadium after 2022. Number 2. Albait Stadium One of the larger stadiums, the Albait Stadium will stage matches right through to the semifinals of the competition. It is set to host nine matches and will be the stage for the opening ceremony and opening match between hosts, Car and Ecuador. This stadium has the second highest capacity, accommodating 60,000 spectators. The arena is designed to represent Arab hospitality with a structure looking like a traditional Arab tent known as Beit al Shar. Given that temperatures in Qatar can reach 30 degrees Celsius even in November, the stadium's architecture reflects both Qatar's past and present while serving as an example of green growth and sustainability. To keep out the, it will also have a retractable roof, positioned 27 miles from the city's core. Although it is the farthest stadium from Doha, Visitors who don't want to leave can stay in the venue's opulent five-star hotel and enjoy the upscale amenities of its soon-to-be-opened shopping mall. Number 3. ALG Noob Stadium The futuristic design of the ALG Noob Stadium is inspired by the sale of the Dow Boats traditional to the country of Qatar and a nod to the coastal city's maritime heritage. It boasts a retractable roof and an innovative cooling system to ensure the ground can hold events all year round, even during the searing heat of the summer months. It was designed by the world-renowned late British Iraqi architect, Zahedid. The funny thing about this stadium is when Ayd's design was first released and went viral, commentators suggested the stadium looked more like a woman's private parts. Al Stadium was the first of the World Cup stadiums to be completed back in the summer of May 2019, and it has a capacity of 40,000. Number 4 Stadium 974 and a first for the World Cup this stadium has been made from 974 shipping containers and other modular steel elements echoing the nearby port and the industrial history of the plot. Due to the upcycled materials used, the stadium can easily be dismantled after the tournament finishes. The stadium's clever modular design meant that fewer normal building materials were required than in traditional stadium development, which helped keep construction costs. Stadium 974 is the only waterfront venue with a spectacular view of the Doha skyline. 
The result is a distinctive, boldly, colorful, and thoroughly modern arena. The stadium's idea was created by Fenwick Baron Architects. Education City Stadium is number five. This well-known stadium, which hosts six games all the way through the quarterfinals, is located inside the Catter Foundation, a short distance from the city's core. The national women's team will call Education City Stadium home following the World Cup. The stadium is shaped like a diamond and is known as the Diamond in the Desert, since it is made to sparkle during the day and illuminate at night. The triangles on the stadium's front produce intricate geometrical patterns like diamonds, which seem to change color as the sun moves across the sky. The stadium's design represents quality, durability, and resilience, and will become something to be treasured, both for the memories it holds and its future value to the country. Number 6. Ahmed Ben Ali Stadium This stadium, which also underwent a name change after initially being called the Alien Stadium, will host seven matches up until the quarterfinal stage and is meant to be a reflection of Qatari culture. The intricate patterns on the facade represent Qatar from its wildlife to its trade history. Because the ground is near the desert, the hospitality areas and merchandise stalls outside the ground will be shaped to resemble aliens' sand dunes. The stadium was built on the side of the old ground, with a majority of construction materials used to erect the Ed Ben Ali Stadium. Stadium number seven, Al FMA Stadium. This stadium is inspired by the Gia, a traditional woven cap worn by men across the Middle East, and it's easy to see in pictures of the stadium. The GIA forms a fundamental layer of the traditional clothing of the region. It is also a symbol of dignity and independence. This is the first World Cup venue to be designed by a Qatari architect, Ibrahim Al. J with the capacity of 40,000, the stadium will host a total of eight matches during the World Cup. After the tournament, the stadium will have its capacity donating the seats to developing countries. The remaining 20,000-seat arena will be used for football and other sporting events. A sports clinic will open on site, as well as a boutique hotel, which will replace the stadium's upper. The precinct surrounding this stadium will become a community hub with facilities for multiple sports. There will also be a number of retail and commercial units created to ensure the area becomes a bustling hub of exercise and activity. Number 8. Khalifa International Stadium this was one of the only stadiums to have been opened before the World Cup was awarded to Qatar, with it initially built in 1970. In front of 40,000 people, it also played host to the Amir Cup final in May of last year. Since it debuted, it has served as the nation's national stadium, and it underwent substantial renovations in preparation for the World Cup this season. The stadium underwent renovation and expansion in 2005 in preparation for its role as the focal point of Qatar's 2006 Asian Games. It has also hosted the Golf Cup, the AFC Asian Cup, and the IAF World Athletics Championships in 2019. The stadium, which includes sweeping arcs and partially covered stands, is the centerpiece of Aspire Zone, a sports complex that includes the Aspire Academy for Sports Excellence and many other sporting venues attached to the stadium. BI Walkway is the 321 Qatar Olympic and Sports Museum, adding to the appreciation of how this venue cherishes its past as it builds towards an exciting future like any other mega construction project. These stadium projects have also undergone its share of criticism and controversy. The World Cup in Qatar has come under international criticism, not only for its high cost, but above all for human rights. Thousands of workers have reportedly died due to dangerous working conditions while building the stadiums due to these allegations. There is an ongoing debate in many countries about whether or not to watch the World Cup. Recently, most big cities in France decided against broadcasting the games in public on big screens due to human rights violations and environmental impacts of the stadium. Recently, the tournament had happened and the Messi rocked it by his performance. What are your thoughts on these stadium projects? Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Getting my way in to be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now.